Pinckney Ben Stewart Pinchback was a visionary. Between the end of 1872 and the start of 1873, the son of a Georgia planter and a freed slave served 34 days as governor, the nation's first one of color. Now there were blacks who rose to prominent position, but as we have said, there was none other that rose to be governor. Though his rise was not without prejudice, while he ultimately reached captain in a Union-backed army during the Civil War, white supervisors snubbed him from raises and promotions. He traded the military in 1863 for Alabama politics, only to meet more racial disdain. When the powers that be pushed him back uh, in order to keep his family safe, he stepped back and looked elsewhere where he could make inroads. For Pinchback, that meant returning to Louisiana to fight for black voting rights and education. He published the weekly Louisianian newspaper and won a spot in the state Senate, shuffling up the deck. He was a man on the move, a very uh, shrewd, intelligent man who understood politics and understood human nature to a great degree. When Louisiana's Lieutenant Governor Oscar Dunn died of illness, Pinchback became second in command. And when a 26-year-old playboy governor, Henry Clay Wormuth, lost favor with the Republican brass, Pinchback took the governor's helm, something no African-American would do again until Virginia's Doug Wilder in 1990. Do I believe he thought it would be more than a century for an African-American to be, become governor? I'm shocked by it myself, and I would hope he would be too. Pinchback struck a deal with gubernatorial candidate William Pitt Kellogg that he would not seek an elected term so long as Kellogg ensured Pinchback a seat in Congress. Indeed, state legislators appointed Pinchback to D.C., but questions over Kellogg's legitimacy built enough roadblocks to quash Pinchback's Washington hopes. He was disappointed, but it did not daunt him. So he took another gamble, this time on education, crafting language to help create the nation's only black higher education system, Southern University in 1880. Today on Southern's Baton Rouge campus, the PBS Pinchback Engineering Building honors his legacy. He could understand that individuals yearn for freedom, liberty, and the rights to be men and women in this society. He understood that they should have a right to education, to a chance to feed and support their family. And to make their own luck. In Baton Rouge, I'm Harrison Golden reporting.